Oh my god, this feels like a Shane Dawson video right now. Hey, my little feature Roonies, and welcome back to a new video. So, I realized that I discussed quite a lot of theories and stuff that's to do with The Sims, my Sim series, my characters, the origin stories, the inspiration, all of that kind of thing on Twitter. But not all of you guys are on Twitter, which makes this next point a little bit counterintuitive. But what I asked was, there anything you guys want to know? I haven't revealed any secrets about my characters, about my Sims that you'd want me to talk about in your video. And a lot of you guys came up with some really, really Really interesting stuff and I also have stuff that I've never told you guys so what I've done is I've put a list together of grab your mugs this list is the clash of on sims Oh my gosh, idiot. So this is gonna be loads of um, theories that you guys have that I will either confirm or deny. It is gonna be stuff you guys had absolutely no idea happened that I didn't put in my videos that I'm gonna reveal. Or it's just gonna be stuff that you guys were kind of wondering about that I can now give you a little bit more of a concrete answer on. So it's gonna be a very much spill the tea, sip the tea. I don't know what you do with tea because I drink coffee, but if you do enjoy tea, this video is probably gonna be for you. I have coffee in my hair now. So let's get straight into the list. I actually have 15 bullet points to go through. They start from kind of the more interesting sort of, oh, that's kind of cool too. What? I can't believe that just happened. So there's a little tea. Uh, the, the final one, I think you guys are gonna be a little bit upset about, which is why I didn't put it in the series. But hold on, don't skip ahead. Don't post spoilers in the comments. Let's just get down to it. If you wanna post spoilers, just list the number, don't list what it is, because that way you're not gonna ruin it for everybody else. Okay, let's get straight into it. So tea fact number 15, Micah and Ryder. Do you guys remember? My cut was actually made by me just having fun in class a really, really long time ago. I posted the pictures to Twitter. You guys really, really liked him as well. I thought he was the most beautiful sum I'd ever made at the time. I absolutely adored him. But I didn't really tell you guys the reason that I originally made him. So I was actually going to introduce Micah as a love interest for Ryder. This is when Ryder and Jake were still a lot younger, but they were kind of like, it was a bit of a strange relationship. Ryder was very like emotional, artsy, like very like outwardly lovey, whereas Jake was a lot more logical, colder almost, he drank a lot. Like it was just a time when their like relationship was on the rocks. Micah was going to be introduced as a fellow artist who was obviously beautiful and young and who Ryder would completely fall in love with and end up having an affair. I really wanted to do an affair as part of Ryder and Jake's storyline. But if you guys were so, so upset about the idea that I would break up our first ever male-male relationship that I ended up canning the idea just because I didn't want to upset you guys too much. And I saw value in the idea that, you know, these are two guys in a relationship. Let's show it as a stable, healthy relationship. Like, let's go down that route instead. So hung on to Micah until the time was right when I would have another um, gay male character because in my head from that point onwards, Michael was definitely gay. And yeah, the rest is history. T fact number 14, Lilith the Vampire. So I've touched on this in a couple of episodes. I've mentioned it before. The idea was always going to be for Lilith that I wanted some way to make her character sort of live on forever in a way. Um, I was really skeptical about adding vampires to my series because I don't like the super, like, at the time I was doing a very realistic sim series and that would have been very, very supernatural. And vampires in the sims kind of bug me a little bit. I don't like that they invade all the rest of the neighborhoods. I don't like they sneak in your house and bite people. Like, But once I started reading mods about how to keep them in an environment, Environment into the, um, is it Sleepy Hollow or Forgotten Hollow? You can keep them in one environment and change a few things about them. I was actually feeling a little bit more hopeful that we would have a spin-off series. It would be focused around Lilith and just Lilith and that she would be a vampire. However, then Phoenix died and then Sammy tried to sacrifice himself for her and then Lilith took the ultimate kind of step and the ultimate act of love, which was to die in place of somebody she loved very much. And I kind of feel like she almost immortalized herself in a different way. So I'm, I'm not sad about the way Lilith's storyline went, but Lilith it was definitely meant to be a vampire. Key fact number 13, Sammy's addiction. You guys have noticed that Sammy uh, sort of has, basically he always gets to the point where he's so drunk he makes terrible decisions. He gets the most drunk the most often. And even when he's like drunk throwing up, he keeps drinking. Some of you guys have kind of theorized that Sammy most likely has an addiction to alcohol, but I would go one further than that in my thoughts on Sammy. I think Sammy has a problem with addiction overall. You can see that in the way that when he fell for his best friend, he kind of focused only on that and kind of made 
that his sole identity and obsessed about it. And then even when the friend was like, no, he continued like pushing it very, very hard. I think Sammy just has addiction problems in general. I think when he finds something, he latches onto it and he tries to make it his entire sort of personality and persona. So I wouldn't just say that Sammy has an addiction with alcohol. I would say Sammy has an addictive personality. So number 12, Braylon's origin stories. So I have talked about this a little bit on Twitter. Braylon was originally made as part of my Rainbow, Rainbow Sims challenge and not long after making him, I read um, a Reddit story and I've actually read some similar in the past, but there was one that really resonated with me of um, a guy was posting onto a relationships forum on Reddit. His initial post was like, look, I'm, I'm gay, my best friend isn't. We've always been such a good friend. He's never cared that I'm gay, but he's obviously gone out and chased girls quite hard. Like, and anyway, we got drunk one night and one thing led to another and he's been avoiding me ever since. What do I do. And the guy's follow-up story was a really sad one. He, ever since that night where, you know, the friend, the best friend I was in love with, I thought maybe he felt the same way. He has completely um, shut me out of his life. Basically, he's just ghosted me massively. And it wasn't an uncommon story. It was kind of like a really sad reality that for some gay men, they kind of go through this thing where friends are the people that th they think they trust. Almost use them to like experiment and see if they think they're gay. And they kind of come away from it and they're just so like a shame, like they're feeling so much shame about what they've done, so much self-hatred that they take it out on the person that they had the experience with. And either way, it seemed like the poor guy that was the one that was in love with his best friend ended up being the one that was her. So that is the reason Braylon was added to Sammy B's storyline. It was always meant to be this character that Sammy fell in love with, but would ultimately be incredibly hurt by. I know some of you guys love the idea of a brand new romance, but it's actually a really unhealthy relationship. That is basically where Braylon's origin story comes from. T Fact 11, Micah's origin story. So keeping on the theme of origin stories, you guys know that Micah was originally made to become a rider love interest. When I re-added him as part of a Sammy storyline, I was hugely, hugely inspired by Shonen and I which is um, kind of like animes or mangas or manhwas, which are like Korean mangas. The two main characters in it, the two main guys, what often tends to be the case is you have this older, very cool, very cool in that he's kind of cold externally. He's good looking, like he's really sure of himself. And then you have this like goofy, clumsy, but adorable younger character and the two of them end up falling in love. And that's like a super, super common stereotype theme in these stories. And one common theme is that the older character, the one that's the cool one, ends up realizing his feelings first and feeling this very protective sort of caring role over the crazy young clumsy um, guy who doesn't realize for a long time. And there's kind of like this big moment when it happens. He was meant to be somebody that unlike Braylon was super sure and confident of the fact that he was gay and kind of showing some Sammy, there's totally other side to the fact that you can own that. But then also being the person that like when Sammy gets drunk and like goes off crying, he just like says fine sleep here and like looks after him, but not in a creepy way, just in a super caring way. And I really wanted to show that in a storyline. I love those kind of stories. So that was where that story came from. Next up, T fact number 10 is Phoenix's death. Now, a lot of you guys um, were asking whether I deliberately killed Phoenix, whether I wanted to kill Phoenix, whether she was meant to die as part of this whole storyline with Lilith and Sammy B. The honest answer is no. And not only is it no, she actually died earlier on in that episode from becoming so tense. I was so mad that I rage quit the game and replayed everything identically up to that point, but I managed her emotions better and she still died. So when she died again, you can kind of see in my expression, watch the moment when Phoenix dies. I don't like react straight away I'm like because I'm so annoyed because it happened a second time so I definitely didn't kill Phoenix and I was actually really annoyed that she died because I'd literally built um you know the gig the venue that um Fran had his first gig I built that ready for Phoenix to take Fran for the first time and express her feelings for him and then she went and died so the whole Sammy B Phoenix and uh, Lilith storyline was completely on plan but I kind of wrote it in because it kind of played quite well and like I was fine I'm happy with the way it went but Phoenix was not supposed to die okay T fact number nine is Holly's pregnancies as you know, Holly has had two of Abel's babies. She's had Seth, um, who's a blackhead baby, and Eve, who is the whitehead baby. And you guys were asking, did I uh, script in both of those pregnancies? Like, did I cause them both on purpose? Or did I cause one? Did I cause the other? Were they both completely unplanned? Here is the tea. 
So, um, obviously, when Abel and Holly were on holiday together, there is no possible way that Holly could have become pregnant because her household was already at eight sims. But the reason for this was um, the cats. That is the only reason for that, which was super annoying. My plan was to get Holly pregnant on that um, holiday, and then the cats kind of ruined it, and then Abel died. And I didn't cause that, by the way. This isn't even a fact on here. I didn't kill Abel. I'm kind of glad that he died while he was still beautiful and young, so that is the memory I have of him. He's like James Dean. He's like Kurt Cobain. He's like Amy Winehouse. However, I didn't kill him. But I was super annoyed about that, and I planned to just like find Holly's gone, like whatever, Abel's gone. But I kind of felt so annoyed that I meant for a pregnancy to happen, and the game's mechanics stopped me rather than any other reason. That I'm like, no, I'm gonna go and make a pregnant. So I made a pregnant. I posted the little cute teaser image. Seth was born. That was fine. There was one baby, and then I saw her in the background of another video, and she was pregnant again. I did not do this. I 100% did not do this. So I freaked out. I went to the house and made her have the baby. Made the baby become a toddler so I could check who the father was and the father was Abel. So literally Holly had ghost woo-woos with Abel off screen. Zero to do with me. I didn't even know Sims could do that but honestly your sim who you're not even playing with who is like an NPC can get pregnant with a ghost. Just so you know it can happen. It's happened to me. It's real. And it's kind of annoying. Yeah, I didn't cause, I caused 50% of Holly's pregnancies and the 50% I didn't cause, I am very shocked about. So, tea fact number eight, Max was supposed to be physically abusive. So, Emmax, kind of like this relationship that you either love or hate. I had always fully intended for them to break up, for her to walk away and for them to never get back together again. And I actually meant for that relationship to fully show um, kind of like a domestic, like, it, it, kind of like a domestic violence side, but I'm also super aware of my audience. I never wanted it to go too far, but I did, did definitely want to show that Max wasn't just um, like verbally abusive. I, he was in, initially intended to also be physically abusive, but in the end, I just couldn't do it. I know who my audience are, and also, just because it's a game and you're playing Sims, I get quite invested, so I'd find it really hard to make him hit Emma. Like, I would have just not been able to do that. I scrapped that storyline, and I'm kind of glad I did, because I think you can forgive somebody for being a bad partner when you're both very young. They're very stressed, and they can, like, say things they don't mean, or be cruel verbally. Like, I feel like that kind of stuff when you're older and you're more mature, you can kind of somewhat forgive them for it and move on. But physically abusive, I don't think you could ever move on for that. So... I'm kind of glad I never went down that storyline or else Max and Emma would never have been able to get back together again. So that is kind of tea that you guys didn't know. That's something that I'm just letting you guys know was meant to be a storyline, but I scrapped it. Okay, tea fact number seven. Cody was going to be cold. So when Cody aged up into a teenager, I just kind of felt such a blahness about him. I didn't like his appearance. I was kind of like, I, I, I didn't really know where his character was going. I wasn't that interested in him anymore. So I planned to either kill him off or just move him out and get rid of him because I had way too many Sims. So any Sims that I didn't see as being a strong storyline, I just wanted to get rid of. However, I saw one of you guys redesign Cody and I liked what you'd done with him so much that I tried it in my game without changing his bone structure. And I liked it so much much that I then started to get much more excited about Cody and I actually started to think of cool things we could do with him. Strangerville couldn't have come at a better time because he was perfect for that and he's now one of my favorite characters. The downside for that is because I decided to keep Cody on as a main character I had to lose characters elsewhere which is why Hunter left the series. There was just too many sims I had to get rid of some so Cody's gain was Hunter's loss. Hunter became a side character so that we could focus on Cody. T fact number six, Erica was supposed to end up with Abel. Some of you guys will be super shocked about this. Uh, the storyline I originally planned is that although Erica was like the one girl that Connor always saw himself ending up with and kind of once he'd got through all these other girls, he saw Erica as his end goal. I kind of thought it would be much more interesting if the whole time Connor had been playing around and Erica had been watching him. When he came to her at the end and been like, actually, you're the girl for me. She would be like, well, I'm glad you think that, but you know, you can go back to playing around because I'm not interested 
interested in you and I'm not interested in that. And that she would actually find much, much more interest in the more quiet, sort of like troubled, sweet Abel instead. And you can tell that I wanted to do this storyline because when Abel ran away from home, it was Erica that found him. And that was supposed to blossom into a romance. Um, but again, uh, there's so many storylines that now looking back, I do wish I'd have just gone with my gut feel. But I changed the storyline because of what you guys said. You guys really, really wanted Cody and, um, sorry, Erica and Connor to be together. So I changed my storyline for you guys. I think sometimes you guys don't realize how much your input actually does shape my storylines. Um, and that is one I sort of regret because I do think it would have been much more interesting to go with my original thought process. But again, I'm still happy with the way things have worked out. Um, Erica was able to kind of like see Connor as the person he was then rather than the person he was in his past. And I don't know, maybe if Eric and Abel had have ended up together, Abel would have been kind of grandfathering grandbabies of his own right now instead of being six for under. Okay, final five. These ones are juicy. T fact number five. Indy and Viola were almost deleted. Now, if you watched the episode where I discovered these, you could kind of see that this was probably very likely to happen. I just basically got back to the house and I originally planned Taylor and Emily to only have half faith. They didn't strike me as the kind of people that would have loads of babies. They would strike me as the kind of people that would focus all their, you know, huge amount of political power, social power, money, wealth, and influence on one child and make them amazing. Which to be fair, they did, cause faith is amazing. This is not long after I'd initially downloaded MCC and I just switched everything on. I'm like, Yes, Sims, you do you. Do everything you want. I want the drama. I want the gossip. This is going to be amazing. Got back to the household and there was two babies floating around. And I was so angry because it completely ruined my storyline. I kind of wanted to be able to move Emily and Taylor out and really focus on Faith a lot earlier. But instead, I had these two extra twins to deal with and I didn't plan for them at all. Even now, they still are kind of like, they've had their interesting moments and I do like them. But I never truly know what to do with them because they were never meant to exist, which is why they were almost deleted. I kept them, but you can kind of tell that they were definitely not planned. So on a really similar note is T fact number four, the deleted twins. Now, if you're eagle-eyed, and many of you have noticed this, you will see that if you look at Charlie Rose and Asher's bloodline, there are two twins that appear on their family tree. And I gloss over them. I'm always like, oh, it's just a glitch in the game. Oh, they, like, I don't know why they appear there. It's just a glitch. Guys, truth time. It was not a glitch. The exact same thing happened with them as happened with Taylor and Emily. And the MCC just went through this phase of giving everyone twins. Everybody got twins. There were twins everywhere. In the wild, in my Sims game, there were twins. NPCs everywhere. It literally drove me mad. So when I got to their house and I realized there were two twins there, I was just so mad. I clicked on one of them and the option wheel came up and there was just this option that was dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. So I clicked it and the twin disappeared. I was like, oh, clicked the other twin and that twin disappeared. I'm like, well, this is great. I've just deleted them. Fine, whatever. I didn't even want them in the first place. No, that is not the way you delete twins. You have to age them up into a toddler and then go in MCC and then delete them or delete them off like your cast menu. You can't delete them that way, which is why they they will always be there cursing the family tree. I then felt so bad about the fact that I had deleted these twins that I let them have another set of twins. So they are the fabled deleted twins, the original Chase and Willow. They were deleted. I'm sorry guys, it's true. T fact number six, the Villarreal fire. have asked me about this. I've always kept things kind of under wraps. Now it's time to reveal all on the Villarreal fire. I basically wanted to, I wanted to kill Elsa. I knew Elsa was gonna die. I knew that from a very early time. It was broken dream and the dream was always gonna be broken and that was the latest way to break it. However, I couldn't figure out a way to kill Sims. It's so hard to kill Sims. Like they just don't die. So I downloaded a mod that would make a fire super aggressive, which was always planned. So that bit was planned. What I did not in a million billion years Year's plan is for the real the Villarreal fire to happen the way it did. Literally the whole lot on fire. I had to stop my recording midway through and just sit there like this. I switched autonomy off. I put them all in a field and kept them out there. And I just had to sit and watch because that fire, no word of a lie, went on for like three hours game time. Lilith was there like like getting rid of this fire and it Every time she sprayed it out, it increased the amount of time the fire was gonna be there for. So Elsa was meant to die. Uh, I didn't plan for Lilith to be the one that would save Max and um, 
Abel? That wasn't planned. That was a happy accident though, and I'm so happy because it, it was such a huge part of her character. It really shaped who she was as a person, so I'm really glad that happened. Max, I kind of wasn't sure if he would die or not. I wasn't overly bothered. Like, I was kind of like, uh, he might die, he might not. But Abel, I knew I did not want to die. The way it planned out was perfect, and it's kind of become an iconic moment just because of how crazy it was. But it was 50% planned. Elsa was meant to die, but that fire was never meant to be like that. Okay, T fact number two. Was Roxy transgender? So this is kind of a funny one. Um, you know how JK Rowling kind of post confirms stuff in her books that you kind of like, well, there was nothing in the books that really indicated that. Like she's kind of mentioned before, oh, actually Hermione is black. But then if you go back in the book, she's kind of described her skin color as being pale. And then she kind of wrote that, oh, actually Dumbledore was gay. I'm not getting into the Harry Potter like theories, what's been confirmed and not confirmed by JK Rowling. I'm just saying that some authors tend to take this liberal sort of like, well, actually something in my head kind of lines up afterwards and yeah, I'm going to confirm it. I'm saying that because that's what I am gonna do now. So Roxy being transgender didn't really occur to me until I saw, and I didn't set this, I 100% did not set this, that when she peed, she peed standing up. But that combined with, I don't know, I always felt like Roxy, I would always describe her as being more handsome than beautiful. She was totally beautiful. I don't mean it in that respect. I just mean she had this like such unique striking look about her. When you combine the, that with the fact that she peed standing up, she had the striking look, and she also was able to procreate with Jesse. I mean, the facts are all there for the fact that Roxy probably was transgender. Once I started to think about that, I loved it. I loved it so much, but it's obviously not something I ever mentioned initially. But I would like to, on the record right now, confirm Roxy was transgender. Like, the facts are too clear for it not to be. I don't think it devalues her relationship with Jesse at all. I still think they're the most beautiful, iconic couple. And obviously, Roxy was a woman. It doesn't matter whether she was a man initially. She identified as a woman. She was a woman. They were in lesbian relationship but I actually liked I would like to confirm that she was male to female because I don't know I just like it and the facts are all there so now for the biggest tea bug in the no now for the biggest tea spill in the whole world tea fact number one I can't believe I have to say this James cheated on Salma yeah it happened. I chose to hide it from you guys because I was so upset and hurt by it that I couldn't do that to you guys as well. You guys may remember that I originally brought Dia back to um, the suburbs for the storyline of James potentially having an affair with her or being tempted with an affair by her. However, it never happened. And in the parameters where that storyline was planned, it never happened. This happened afterwards. Again, this was the result of MCC kind of messing up my game. But I was in the household once doing doing something with another sim and Dia was round hanging out with James fine, whatever, normal. However, I went back to go check on them and they were woo-wooing in the steam room sauna. So yeah, James did cheat on Salma. However, I was like so shocked that I went back to check what had happened and I looked at his romance bar and his romance bar was like, I, I, it was still zero back from when they were teenagers. So it was actually MCC allowing um, like woo-woos without romance. Like, so it was an MCC reason like they didn't do it like they didn't have this affair that they planned out it was more like mcc passing talk about interests and woo -woo in sauna as the same level of normalty so in my head i don't count, count it as canon i do not count as canon that james cheated on salma they will always be a beautiful couple and jamma is pure and perfect however off camera, MCC did cause James to sleep with Dia. But for me, it isn't canon and I am the storyteller. This is my rules, this is my series. So I don't believe that he did cheat on her, but technically he did, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So there you go, guys. Let me know which number. Don't say what it is. Say which number you found the most shocking. Let me know which number you found the most interesting. Let me know which one you were kind of thinking all along or which one you, or if there's any others actually, if there's any others you guys think of, let me know in the comments and I could do another one of these videos. I've never done something like this before. I feel like a lot of my secrets and skeletons are out in the wild and raw now, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big cheeky thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. And maybe I'll see you guys for some more tea real soon. Thank you for watching my video. Bye.